so uh, a very good evening to all of you so my name is dr jyoti singh and i'm serving as assistant professor in the department of food technology and nutrition and um, uh, my experience is uh, more than 7 years and i have worked in the area of nutrition and food technology so rest of the introduction was given by swati uh so uh without wasting time we will be starting with the presentation which is on non communicable diseases and their management so we all know uh that you know nowadays due to the lifestyle problem due to the dietary pattern um mm -hmm. many people or the prevalence rate of the non communicable disease which includes diabetes obesity cancer has increased a lot and even uh, who has recommended uh, that that if we are not going to change it we are not going to change our lifestyle we are not going going to change our dietary pattern so the number may increase up to 50% of the total population uh, so that is why the uh, knowledge towards the non communicable disease as well as their management is equally important so if we talk about uh, the you know the prevalence of non communicable disease so it actually starts from the childhood only because that is the only period which is actually uh, you know defined as the uh, period of the uh, reservation or the period of the deposition of the nutrients or the extra allowances in the body and if you know during that period of time during first 5 years if the proper nutrition is not imparted to a child uh through the breastfeeding through the healthy diet through the you know uh, high protein and high energy in the diet so the child get malnourished or the child is going to suffer from the nutritional deficiency and if this nutritional deficiency is going to be continued to the you know adulthood or to the adolescent period so the uh, chances or the prevalence of the non communicable diseases increase diabetes so genetic manipulation also plays a major role so we will be starting with you know the uh, period of adulthood because that's the period from where we can prevent or you can we can manage the non communicable disease if already somebody is suffering from non communicable disease so uh, obviously before we start uh, i would like to uh, focus on the adulthood period because many people uh, they have the confusion towards the actual age group that where from where it starts till where it ends so adulthood is termed as the period which actually uh, you know have the maximum period uh, or the maximum years of the life span because it lasts up to 40 to 50 years so uh, adulthood is the period period which starts from 19 years of age because we all know teenage that is with it starts from 13 to 19 and from 19 or 19 onwards the adulthood is going to be started so uh, this is the period if you talk about from the nutrition point of view so there is no special requirement during this period but yes um, the although the growth stops by the adulthood but the development continues right so a child who used to be you know uh, immature during the teenage is uh, is suddenly going to be a mature adult by the 20 years or 21 years of age and we also have seen these kind of changes in our you know life also that how we used to be in our teenage and then how a drastic change uh, you know um, comes and how it get shifted uh, towards the mentality thinking process thought process everything when you enter into your adulthood period so uh, it is actually the uh, life span it starts from 20 years and uh, goes up to 50 years or maybe up to 55 years also and uh, if you talk about changes which takes place in the adulthood so we actually define the adulthood in three phases it it is young adulthood middle adulthood and uh, later adulthood or old adulthood you can say that so if we talk about the characteristics of the adulthood so it is going to be different for you know the different span in the adulthood because when you talk about the young adulthood phase which is in between 20 to 30 years of age so this is the age group where you know you are going to be concerned about your future that what choices of career you want to opt for you know and that's the period of marriage when somebody start uh, you know thinking about the family life you start having the close relationship with your peer with your friends you are concerned about society also you know that how people are going to react how they are going to behave what they will say and then 
uh, once you come to the middle adulthood, so that's the period when you reach to a certain level of maturity, you're responsible now, you're stable now. And obviously by this age group, like after 30 years of age, 30 to, uh, you know, 40 years of age, people start having their stability and also they have their own family. So the focus shifts from oneself to their kids, to their children. And then they start doing the planning for the old age as well, because again, savings and, you know, the funds, are, it is also needed because um, you need to have good amount of money to, uh, you know, not remain healthy in the later life, but actually to, you know, um, take out the expenses of the medications of the health issues and all and uh, yes if you talk about the women so by 35 40 years of age they start having menopause so again lots of changes takes place during menopause also then comes the characteristic of the late adulthood which is uh, going to be started from 40 or 45 years of age to 60 years of age and by this age group uh, obviously, by this period, the uh, immune system is going to decline gradually because the rate of the functioning of every organ is going to be diminished. Like kidney, their rate of functioning will be reduced by 30 to 40 percent. Liver functioning will be reduced. Heart functioning will be re reduced. Respiratory uh, functioning will be reduced. Then slowly as the person gets older, so the you know aging signs are going to come. They lose the ability to uh, smell, to taste and all these things. And obviously problems uh, which are very commonly seen in the age group is old age group is constipation, indigestion, flatulence. And all these reasons are because there are lots of physiological changes which takes place during the old age. The function differs uh, functioning is going to be diminished as well as you know the system the cardiovascular system the uh, kidney system the renal or the renal system or the liver functioning uh, the uh, pumping capacity of the heart everything is going to be reduced the enzyme production is going to be reduced and due to that what happens is Again, the constipation, indigestion, flatulence kind of symptoms, the food gets longer, takes longer period of time to get digested in the body. So these kind of changes takes place. So uh, obviously there are going to be kind of gender differences also in the adult age. The women follow life states similar to those of men. But again, if you talk about India, we talk about, uh, you know, the uh, underdeveloped countries. So still, you know, the women, they are taught with the different values, goals, approaches to life. And we also have seen, you know, like uh, uh, in our family, till now, you know, the, our mothers, they used to eat after the whole family eats. Right? And they are going to serve everyone. And then once everybody is done with the meal, then they are going to eat. So these kind of, you know, differences in terms of values, goals are still there. And obviously women, as we say that, uh, that, you know, they deal with a lot of roles, multiple roles and responsibilities. They take care of the family also, kids also, they work also. So depending on all these factors the dietary pattern is also different for males and females and similar to that the energy requirements also differs because you know the energy requirement or we also call it as recommended dietary allowances because everybody has their own special need right how much energy they require how much protein they require how much fat they require everybody has their own individual needs and if you talk about the recommended dietary allowances for men and women that also differs reason being because males they have different kind of body composition as compared to the female if you talk about physical difference obviously males they are taller than females so their body surface area is more right so if body surface area is more it means the volume of the blood is more, the organ capacity is more and the body composition also differs because males, they have more muscle mass and females, they have more fat mass. So on the basis of that, the energy value is going to be different, right? So uh, that's like I said, that there is no special requirement in the adulthood, but we remain uh, you know, we have to remain uh, to the stage of, you know, positive health. And that is why adequate nutrition is needed. Because when you talk about, suppose the nutritional requirement or the energy value, which is required by an infant, obviously is going to be lesser than a child. So as the child grows, the energy requirement increases and the highest energy requirement is in the 
adolescent period and after that it becomes constant to the adulthood and there is no increase in the energy requirement right it is basically that you just need to remain healthy so that your body functions properly there is no need of extra protein there is no need of extra calcium whatever is required in the rd you need to take that only because the body only needs the essential nutrients to function properly but uh, by this time like by the uh, the age of adulthood the body is going to grow in a particular terms like you know the, there will be seizing or there will be a uh, sudden stop in increase in the height reason being because as the pubescence is achieved in the adolescent the growth hormones are suppressed so that is why very less you can say that the adolescents are uh, there who have increased in their height after the pubescence is achieved so height is going to be seized by the you know adulthood but yes the uh, weight always differs because it it is totally dependent on your physical activity lifestyle changes and you know the dietary pattern and all so uh, obviously the proper nutrition in adulthood is it ensures the good health right until the old age reason being uh, because the kind of lifestyle you possess the kind of uh, you know dietary pattern you have is actually decide is going to decide your aging and you must have seen also that if you look uh, like two people of the same age group both of them are 45 years of age one will look younger another will look more you know older reason being because there is going to be difference between what kind of lifestyle both of them have possessed in their adult early adulthood in their adolescent what kind of physical activity they have they have done so all this actually decides how you are going to age so we say that aging is a irreversible process but at what time you age is actually in your hand right so if from today we all are going to improve our lifestyle so maybe we will be aging late at the later period of uh, life so there are various factors on which you know the energy requirement the protein requirement the nutri nutritional requirement is based on like one of the factor i have already discussed is actually the sex or you also uh, term it as gender that females they require less calories as compared to the male age also plays a major role like i said that from childhood to adolescent to adulthood the energy requirement is going to be change and then height weight body composition all plays a major role then um, this is basically the um, rda the recommended dietary allowances which is actually given by indian council of medical research and they keep on updating it on the basis of the changes in the lifestyle or the dietary pattern are going to be observed so you can see that on the table on the left hand side we have the sex differentiation for men and for women and then there are three types of physical activities which are mentioned that is sedentary moderate and heavy so sedentary lifestyle is basically uh, for like the people who actually spend a lot of time you know in um, doing their job while sitting or they don't uh, do much of the physical activity so like for example if i say a clerk or you know a person who is doing an administrative job is sitting you know on on the table in front of his or her laptop and is doing the work is actually a sedentary worker so <clears throat> most of us come into the category of sedentary worker only then moderate are the one who spends you know 6 to 7 hours of um, uh, day time or maybe of the uh, you know the 6 uh, to 7 hours in doing some uh, physical activity which is not much strenuous but yes like the particular period of hour is been spent in doing the physical activity for example rickshaw puller right so he is going to pull rickshaw for almost 6 to 7 hours in a day so he comes into the moderate activity and heavy workers or the heavy physical activity is basically where people spend uh, 6 to 8 hours only but that too in strenuous activities right so like people who uh, are mine workers so they are working under the mines for longer period of time stone cutters you know those who are cutting stones for longer period of time even athletes also those who spend like 4 uh, to 5 hours in strenuous kind of physical activity so you can see that as the uh, physical activity shifts from sedentary to moderate to heavy the energy requirement also increases like males 
sedentary worker they require 2110 kilocalorie moderate worker require 2710 kilocalories and heavy workers they require 3470 kilocalories so there is increase in the calories depending on the physical activity so more physical active you are the more energy requirement is there right because there is more energy utilization in the body so in obviously you are going to require more calories similarly for women again we have the same category and you can see the difference see sedentary male he requires 2110 kilocal sedentary females she requires 1660 kilocal so there is difference between the energy requirement of male and female and then you can see that fat protein calcium requirements are also uh, mentioned in the table now comes we know about rda we know about our age requirement our nutritional requirement so how we have to plan our diet so that you know we will be able to uh, fulfill the energy requirement according to our age according to our sex according to our physical requirement so um, in our field we actually uh, you know have a food pyramid and maybe some of you have heard about it also in school also we have heard about it so food pyramid actually tells us that which food group or which food item needs to be consumed in what ratio or in what amount right so you can see that the shape of the pyramid so the one which is written at the end is actually all your cereals all your pulses which needs to be eaten you know in adequate amount in more amount then eat liberally come uh, contains all your fruits and vegetables then eat sparingly sorry eat moderately contains all your meat fish poultry and oils and fat and eat sparingly is basically your all processed food pizza burgers snacks junk foods and all right and along with that it is mentioned that you have to exercise regularly no smoking no alcohol consumption that's one method and now universally we are actually using my plate method right because obviously it's very difficult to make a layman understand about what is food pyramid you have to eat this you have to eat that so that's why a simple method that is my plate method is you know uh, mentioned here on your right hand side if you can see your screen so you can see that there is distribution on the plate right the half of the plate should always contain your fruits and vegetables because fruits and vegetables are the only source of vitamins and minerals and they also you know uh, help us in preventing non-communicable disease right as well as cancer um, obesity and even many other types of disease also if you talk about you know the diseases like cardiovascular diseases and all where high fiber diet is given it should be given so that comes from your fruits vegetables cereal pulses so you can see that half of your plate should be filled with the fruits and vegetables then uh, one fourth of your plate should be filled with cereals and nutri cereals right so nowadays millets we are uh, we are hearing about the millets we are also celebrating the international year of millets so their consumption because again they are some many of the millets some of the millets they are gluten free also they are high in fiber high in protein and then again you can see that after cereals and nutri cereals the uh, highest ratio is of pulses eggs and meat and meat products then nuts and seeds are also included in it because they are the good source of essential fatty acid which is needed for many vital functions in the body right essential fatty acids helps in your vision it you know helps in nerve transmission transferring the signals into the brain etc and then fats and oils that the least amount of uh, uh, least amount should be there on your plate right because fats and oils again they are required by the body uh, we never say that you know if you are on diet or if you are doing um, you are focusing on any type of diet you are work, you are going for weight loss program so you should restrict fat completely no fat should never be restricted completely because there are fat soluble vitamins in your body like vitamin a d e and k which are very much essential for you and if you restrict fat so these vitamin even if you are taking it through this from the diet it is not going to be absorbed at all in your body because they require fat for the absorption for the metabolization in the body so that is why a particular amount of fat if you have seen in the previous table according to the age group it is required the only thing on which we need to work on is the type of fat right 
like if you are eating a lot of mayonnaise in the burger or you know if you are eating a lot of butter if you are eating a lot of uh, hydrogenated fat like what is there like trans fat and what is there in your patties and all so that is not good for your health and that is bad form of fat so we should avoid those form of fat but we can focus on vegetable oils we can focus on good form of fat right pufa mufa polyunsaturated fatty acid monounsaturated fatty acid so that was all about what we require at this age now comes the ncds what are ncds what how we define non communicable diseases so basically non communicable diseases are the one which is not going to be transmitted from one person to another person right on contrary to the communicable disease communicable diseases like we have viral flu somebody in your group you know is suffering from any kind of viral infection so automatically you are also going to catch it because you know we are sitting in the same air same atmosphere so virus get transmitted through air so non communicable diseases are which are not going to be transmitted which are not caused by the microorganism they are non contagious they are non infectious also and they they are preventable right if you are uh preventing it properly or taking all the precautions if you know that you know diabetes in your is in your genes right so you know that that there are chances that i may suffer from diabetes and you are taking prevention preventive measurement since your adulthood since your adolescence so you may get escape from the problem so that is why non communicable diseases they are manageable they are preventable and yes they are slow in progress also it is not like that that you know today you were fine you were not having any symptoms and next day you will uh, be diagnosed with diabetes it is not the disease which is going to be caused in a day or in, in a day or two it is actually the uh, kind of disease which, which takes years to develop which takes decades to develop and the you can say that the uh, uh, initial initial process or initial progress is going to be starting from the adolescence only or maybe from the childhood only so kids you know those who eat a lot of junk during their childhood period and you know they look chubby also so we used to play we used to like kids those who are chubby those who are hell, like uh, you know overweight but actually that's the sign that the child is actually developing the fat cells good in number which is never going to be decrease in number even if the child uh, you know enters into the adolescent period adult period so once the fat cells which were developed in the childhood is never going to be decrease in number only their size is going to be increase or decrease if the child does physical activity so that's the period when you lay down the foundation of the nutrition if if not at that period of time the problems like ncds are going to arrive or are going to be invited either by in the adulthood period or maybe in the old age period so ncds we call it as either the uh, genetical problem because obviously genes are going to be transferred from one generation to another or lifestyle or behavior related problem right so people those who consumes alcohol those who smokes a lot for a longer period of time obviously their lungs their kidneys their liver are going to be affected from that so these are basically ncds are lifestyle related disorders or the dietary uh, you know uh, management related disorder or the genetic problem also so uh, the non -com major non communicable diseases are all your cardiovascular disease cardiovascular diseases heart diseases and there are many types of heart diseases then cancer diabetes chronic respiratory disease etc so all these comes into the non communicable diseases so i will be focusing on only the major one right there are many but i will be focusing on major one and we may discuss the other types of you know these uh, ncds so the first one is cardiovascular diseases so basically cardiovascular disease diseases are commonly considered a disease in men reason being because you know when we talk about uh, the uh, body composition of the males and the body composition of female like i said before that body composition differs females they have more fat mass males they have more muscle mass but again the type of the fat deposition because 
obviously obesity is commonly seen both in male and female so the kind of fat deposition a male has is completely different from the fat deposition a female has so female has more fat deposition on the lower abdominal area like on hip part on buttock part so there is more fat deposition but for males it is on the central part right so on the uh, part of the trunk or maybe on the part of you know the chest there is more fat deposition that is why they have protrusion on the tummy or they have more you know broadened shoulder and all so that is because uh, the type of the fat deposition so obviously fat deposition is on the central part of the body the heart is going to be affected from it so that is why males they have more prevalence for the heart diseases like heart stroke hypertension and all your uh, you know the heart attacks which are very commonly seen in males the prevalence rate is more in male it doesn't mean that female does not suffer from it but if you compare the data so you will see that more males suffer from it because of the type of obesity and type of fat deposition they possess then um, yes the increase of cholesterol also increases the risk of cvds so cholesterols are going to be deposited uh in the body and that is because of uh you know the um the type of diet the type of fat you consume and the cholesterol has a pathway of getting metabolized in the body because we have many types of lipoproteins in the body which transports the cholesterol from your body cells to your liver so that it gets metabolized like if you have heard about bad cholesterol good cholesterol right so bad cholesterol is your low density lipoprotein and good cholesterol is your high density lipoprotein so why we call ldl as a bad cholesterol because the ldl is going to you know uh deposit the cholesterol into the cells it takes from the liver and it gets depo it it deposit it into the cell so the body has high concentration of cholesterol in that case but if we have good amount of hdl into the body that is high density lipoprotein so what they do they take it from the cell and they deposit it into the liver so that liver will metabolize it so that is why the hdl and ldl have the contrary or opposite role and in our body we need to have good amount of hdl so that the cholesterol will be excreted out from the body right then a heart healthy diet with it should always be low in fat it should always be low in saturated fat and it should always be rich in fruits vegetables whole grains and all so that we will be preventing the heart diseases so if anybody knows that you know hypertension is in my genes my father suffered from hypertension or blood pressure you know my grandfather used to suffer from my my grandfather had health issues heart issues so you should start taking the precautions from today only so that you do not you you are not going to suffer from any kind of such kind of disease or such kind of problem so uh, the leading cause of death you can see that right this is the uh, diagram which shows that what which is the leading cause of death right and you can see that the yellow bubble which is the largest bubble is from heart and circulatory disorder and you know the heart diseases are difficult to be identified reason being because sometimes you get it uh, you know you are not going to identify it properly and you get um, you know uh, miscommunicated in terms of any alarm by your body so sometimes people have you know a, a kind of pain which comes in the wave in the central part of the body so we are going to you know think or we are going to take it as maybe there is some bloating maybe there is some gas formation and we avoid you know keeping a check on that kind of pain so it's very important because you know your body like i i i say this in my class also that human body is nature gift is you know god gifted um create we are god gifted creatures reason being because human body always gives an alarm gives an sign that if if any time something is going to be uh, bad in our body or you know some your body is not functioning properly so alarm is always going to be given you know you have such kind of signs symptoms you you feel some um, you know uh, kind of different feeling and all these things which which is going to be an alarming sign right that something is not good in the body something is not properly working in the body and whenever your body suffer from any kind of problem it always try to fight it by itself first 
If not, then the sign and symptoms are going to be visible. For example, suppose if your body gets infected by any virus. So today you uh, got the viral attack in the body. Next day you'll start having fever. You'll start having coughing. You're, you'll start sneezing. That's the sign. So fever is actually the sign that your body is being infected and your body is fighting against that infection or your immune system is fighting against the infection, right? So after that, cancer, then respiratory disorder and the other causes are mentioned there. So leading causes, the heart disease only, right? So obviously, uh, there are many things which may help us in preventing the heart disease, but the seven life simple steps, which has been given by the AHA, the American Heart Association, which gives the guidelines to it is obviously first we need to uh, be active, right? Uh, you need to be active at first and then you need to control the cholesterol. Because, uh, you know, cholesterol, controlling the cholesterol is very important. If you're not going to control it, you will be suffering from the many types of heart disease because that's the first step that when the heart gets affected. Eat better, like I said, more fiber in the diet, more fruits, more vegetables, manage the blood pressure. They, like uh, people, those who, you know, do stressful jobs or those who suffer from any kind of stress from at workplaces. So they are at the major risk of getting suffer of, you know, adapting the high heart diseases or any type of heart diseases. So it's very important to manage the blood pressure, how we can do it by meditation, by keeping calm, uh, by, uh, you know, calming ourselves by uh, doing some kind of physical activity by joining certain kinds of group like after coming from office we can go for some recreational activity leisure activities which which divert your your mind your thought process and then losing weight because increase in weight is the major risk of the heart disease if you know uh, like a scientific study says that survey has reported that people who has bmi um more than 30, they are at the double risk of heart disease and they are at the triple risk of diabetes. So obesity is a multi, uh, you know, factorial approach for the NCDs and it's vice versa. Obesity may lead to all these problems like diabetes and hypertension and these problems may lead to obesity as well. So we have to uh, go into the direction of losing the weight obviously reducing the blood sugar because heart disease and diabetes, they are interlinked to each other, right? And even obesity also. So blood sugar level also needs to be reduced if, if somebody is suffering from diabetes already and stop smoking because obviously uh, somebody when like um, the one who is a chain smoker or those who smokes a lot, what happens in them? The uh, capacity of pumping, uh, capacity of the heart to pump blood is going to be affected. And the smoke contains carbon monoxide and it also contains nicotine. Nicotine is actually the uh, vasoconstrictor. What it does, like suppose if this is the blood vessel, it is going to constrict the blood vessel. Right, So there is less space for the blood to flow. So obviously, if blood doesn't get any space to flow, so the blood pressure increases. So that is why smoking should always be, you know, prohibited or it should always be stopped because this may lead to the type of the heart disease, especially hypertension. And hypertension is the first step for the heart diseases as the first symptom of the heart diseases. So that needs to be prevented. Then comes the exercise. What is the role of exercise? So first of all, you know, the uh, exercise helps you in losing the weight because when you sweat, when you run, when you do any kind of physical activity. And yeah, before that, I would like to clear it that exercise is not only, you know, when you go to gym and, you know, you are going to uh, burn out your calories. Exercise can be in any form. Even if you swim for one hour, even if you go for brisk walk for one hour or 45 minutes, even you do cycling also, that also comes into the physical activity. And all these type of activity helps in losing the weight, right? So exercise helps in losing the weight. It also increases the production of HDL, which is good cholesterol, like I said, decreases the blood pressure because it improves the circulation. And how we can do the exercise? 
so see if somebody starts doing the exercise and start taking the preventive measurement so it is not like that that the, from the first day you should go for one hour physical activity or you should run into the gym and next day you will be on your bed you won't be able to walk you won't be able to stand because of the muscle cramps and all so whenever you start it should always be uh, started with the light physical activity right so you can go for two or three kilometer of brisk walk and again you can increase your speed like when you are starting with the slow speed or your normal you're doing normal walk then after five to ten minutes you can increase your speed right and then again after that you can go for you know uh, high brisk walk and after that once you are going to stop you will start decreasing your speed so it should always be like a graph first increase and then decrease and then you should stop so like that for three, four days, you'll go for 20 or 25 minutes walk. Then after that, you can go for half an hour, 45 minutes walk. So like that, you can make a pattern so that your body will be able to adapt the change. That is also very important. And that is why many people, you know, when they uh, are going to take initiative that from today, I'm going to do the physical activity, I will go to gym. So they go for two or three days and again, they are going to quit going to the gym reason being again because the they, their body is not going to be adaptive to it they are not going to adapt the body doesn't adapt the change so that is why it is very important that it should always start from a lighter note and then you should you know make the stamina and you should adapt the change then aerobic exercise like brisk walking jogging swimming at least five times a week week and that to 30 to 45 minutes is sufficient and uh, yeah, that's the target heart rate. 50 to 75% of your maximum heart rate should be achieved when you are doing physical activity. So that was all about the cardiovascular disease. Now comes the cancer, right? So cancer is also like uh, we um, read also, we listen in the uh, news also, you know, we scroll when you are scrolling the uh, social media then also you read many posts that you know this celebrity this cricketer uh, they were diagnosed with the cancer and the cancers are of many types so you won't imagine that the cancer are, are of more than 200 types the common one to we know breast cancer prostate cancer brain cancer blood cancer but there are more than 200 types of cancer and that's the second leading death like cause of the death all around the world and um the cancer is like I always say that cancer is not a disease. It is actually an error in your body where the normal body cells, they catch up an abnormal growth of the cell. So like one cell give rise to two daughter cell, then the daughter cell get matured, then they again give rise to two daughter cell. But in case when somebody suffers from cancer, so the cell is not going to divide in two. The cell will divide in multiple cells. Right. And then they are going to lose the capacity to, uh, you know, gov give birth only to the two daughter cells. They are going to grow in an abnormal way. And that is why the cancer is going to be seen, because when the cells grow in an abnormal way, they make a tumor mass. And that tumor mass, if it is going to be an benign tumor, it is fine fine in, in terms of not that it is completely curable but you can treat the benign tumor because it does not spread from one part to another part if it is in the brain it will remain in the brain only but if that tumor is going to have malignancy nature it means if it is malignant then it will keep on rotating suppose if it is it was in brain we did the surgery, we removed the tumor, but if some traces are going to remain there in the brain, it will reach to the lungs. From lungs, it will reach to the kidney, it will reach to the liver, like that, right? So that is why it is very important that when we are talking about the treatment of the cancer, we need to understand what is the nature of the tumor and then which type of surgery, which type of therapy is going to help us in treating the cancer. Like in movies also, we have seen that, you know, radiotherapy or chemotherapy. So we see that their hair, hair they will start falling, the nails, it will become fragile because of the kind of medications or the kind of antibiotic therapy which has been given in chemotherapy they are very harsh to your body cells right especially the keratin the uh, you know the protein in the body so they kill them along with the tumor so that is why these kind of symptoms are seen at the time of the treatment measurement like from radiotherapy or chemotherapy so how we can prevent it obviously we need to take high 
consumption like there should be high intake of the fruits or the vegetables because fruits and vegetables they are filled with good amount of vitamin good amount of uh you know the uh, uh minerals and they help us in making the antioxidants level in the body reducing the um the um, oxidative stress in the body so that is why it is very important that we should consume good amount of protein good, good amount of fruits and good amount of vegetables so if we talk about what lifestyle factors may lead to cancer so obviously behavioral factors are there like smoking alcohol then diet sexual behavior also because although cancer is not the communicable disease but yes like you know semen we can say that but not uh uh like uh what what you can say that not exactly like 100% uh, chances are there like it, it may suffer from one person to another person but yes like uh sex with the multiple partners may initiate the process then environmental pollution obviously because you know the air which you inhale if it is polluted if it is uh, having traces of chemicals pesticide insecticide which is constantly going into your body through your lungs so it may lead to lung cancer then lack of exercise natural hormones sunlight uv rays all these are all these in any of the way plays like carcinogen cancer causing substances right even natural hormones also if they are going to increase more in numbers so they may lead to cancer sunlights like your uv rays gamma rays right they also can lead to skin cancer so uh, these are the physical factors then we have chemical factors also like people those who work in the industry where insecticide uh then pesticides is being prepared so they are also at the major risk of suffering from cancer because the kind of environment in which they are doing their job they are spending more than 6 to 8 hours a day so they are going to be at the risk then comes the diabetes mellitus obviously diabetes we all know that what it is it is high uh blood glucose level and there are many types of diabetes more than five types of diabetes so diabetes increases the risk of the heart disease uh and the increased blood glucose levels are going to be there the weight management and heart healthy diet are the cornerstone of the treatment see what happens in the diet is basically the insulin insensitivity so insulin is the hormone we all know is responsible for balancing the blood glucose level so if person has the genetic deposition of the diabetes like in family somebody suffering from diabetes or if there is less production of insulin in the body or insulin receptors are damaged due to any change in the body any uh, you know uh, other disease in the body so they are not insulin is not available to balance the blood glucose level so if you eat something you know obviously when you eat something the energy is released the glucose glucose is produced and then that glucose is uptaken by the cells because cells need energy right cells for cells the glucose is the food but if the insulin is not available so the cells will not be able to uptake the glucose so the glucose levels in the blood remains high that is what is hyperglycemia or that is what is that what that is what it leads to diabetes so risk factors for diabetes we divide it into two categories non modifiable factor characters or the factors or modifiable factors right so uh, non modifiable is which you can't correct which you can't modify modifiable is which you which is in your hand and we can correct it so obviously uh, type 2 diabetes firstly i will explain type 2 diabetes is also called as adult onset diabetes which is seen in in adults and that is because of when the insulin is either produced in little amount which is not sufficient to uptake the glucose or the insulin uh, sensitivity is there right then if you talk about type 1 diabetes type 1 diabetes is congenital or it is going to be seen in children so we also call it as juvenile diabetes congenital is which is present by birth right so juvenile diabetes or the diabetes which is seen in children that is because that is due to when the insulin is not produced at all because insulin is an hormone right so if 
by birth it is present by problem is present it means the insulin is not producing it at all so the child suffer from type 1 diabetes then comes the third type which is gestational diabetes gestational diabetes is which is seen during pregnancy so when a woman conceives there are lots of physiological changes which takes place in her body there are lots of hormonal changes also so when see in your body if some hormones is going to increase in number like what was happening in the pubescent when menstrual cycle was starting in the adolescent period the sperma cave was starting in the adolescent period so when this happens when reproductive hormones are high so this suppress the growth hormone that is why very less girls or boys they have increased in height after they reach to the pubescent but in case of uh, similarly, in case of diabetes, uh, gestational diabetes also, when progesterone, estrogen, all these reproductive hormones are high, they suppress the action of insulin. That is why many pregnant women, more than 27% of pregnant women suffer from gestational diabetes during pregnancy. Although once they deliver the baby, they are going to be cured from the gestational diabetes. It is temporary only, lasts for two trimester or maybe one trimester. But if during that period, they are not going to follow the, you know, dietary management. So they may be a permanent sufferer for diabetes. Then comes the, uh, yeah, the rates or ethnicity. Like I said, if it is popularly seen in certain type of population, you can't change it. More than 45 years of age, aging, we can't change it. Family history, genetic deposition, we can't change it. So all these comes into the non-modifiable factors modifiable factors are physical activity high body fat or body weight high blood sugar or high blood cholesterol or high blood pressure this is in our hand right we can modify it <clears throat> so how we can prevent or manage it so obviously uh, first of all we know about the causes we need to work on the causes weight loss should be there physical activity should be there more of the fruits and vegetables should be eaten and we have to avoid simple sugars. simple sugars are like your table sugar because you know simple sugars are the one which are going to be easily digested by the body so it means if you are eating something which shoots up your glucose level you are already suffering from diabetes, so it may worsen the condition. It may lead to, uh, uh, you know, in uh, the uh, diabetic shock also, which is very fatal. People die in seconds when they have, a, you know, a sudden increase in their blood sugar level. And then we also have ABCs of diabetes. Uh, so A is for the A1C test, which we also termed it as HbA1c test. If you have seen the report of any diabetic patient, so you will see that many type of blood test is being done. Random blood sugar level test, you know, postprandial blood sugar level test, that is after the meal, oral glucose tolerance test, that they give glucose and then they see how much rise is there. And similarly, we have HbA1c test. It is basically when the level of glucose is high in the body, so your hemoglobin which is there in the body, they bind with the, uh, uh, you know, the glucose and they make another compound, which is glycosylated hemoglobin. So if its level is more than 18% in the body, the person is diabetic and that is the most reliable test because see random blood glucose level, postprandial glucose level, you can't rely on it. Maybe patient has eaten something and, you know, has said that this is, uh, I'm coming with the empty stomach or maybe, the gap after a meal, which needs to be, uh, you know, uh, two hours only is more. So that is why you can't rely on the blood parameters, random uh, blood test or postprandial blood test. But HbA1c, which is actually present or the compound has been made into the body. So that gives you the history also, like from past three uh, months, what was the blood glucose level? So that is why that's the most reliable test, HbA1c test. And we should go with this only to confirm the diabetes. And B stands for blood pressure, because obviously when the, um, you know, the blood pressure is high, so the heart has to work a lot, you know, to um, cope up with the uh, pressure in the body and then again to pump blood. Right. So uh, if it is not going to be treated, it may lead to heart attack, stroke, kidney diseases and all. C stands for cholesterol. We already have talked about LDL, HDL. And then obviously S stands for for stopping smoking. Right. So that needs to be prevented when we are talking about diabetes or even cardiovascular disease. 
So see, diabetes, we call it as a self-management disease because controlling your blood sugar level is in, your, in, is in your hand and proper monitoring is also very important. Every day or alternative day, a person who is diabetic should check his or her blood glucose level when it is increasing, when it is normal, after what type of food he has eaten and the blood sugar level was increased. So that also needs to be noticed. And this is self-management disease. You can easily manage it by meal planning, activity or physical activity planning, medications, because obviously some oral hypoglycemic drugs are also given, right? Then blood glucose monitoring, like I said. Then uh, diet plans, daily foot care also, because see, uh, diabetic foot is also very common. When blood glucose levels are high, the chances of infections are also high and the wound healing capacity also decreases. So even a small cut, if it is going to be there at any part of the body, it is not going to heal normally. And if it is in the feet, so there are more chances that it spreads. It is not going to be you know, uh, easily manageable. So that is why diabetic foot powders are given to them and they're always supposed to wear proper shoes which covers the whole feet to prevent them from the infection. Otherwise, if infection is going to be there, it may lead to, you know, diabetic foot. And in severe cases, we have to ampute the foot also. Amputation is the process when you, you know, remove part of your body. So like feet is going to be removed from the body if the infection increases because it may spread to the whole body. So we have to ampute it also. And then again, skin and dental care is also very important. Now comes whenever we talk about diabetes, it is very important to know about glycemic index. And maybe we have heard about it before also that we have to eat low glycemic index food. So what is glycemic index food? Glycemic index is actually the index which is given to all the food items that how much blood glucose level is going to be increased after eating a particular kind of food item. And we compare it with the white bread. White bread is used as a reference food because it is said that 100 gram of white bread increases 100 mg of glucose in the body. So that's why we have taken it as reference food. So suppose if I want to check that how much glycemic index is there for watermelon. So what I will do, I will eat a particular amount of watermelon and I will check my blood glucose level at how much it was rise and then I will compare it with the white bread. So like that, the table has been presented on your screen that these are the glycemic index of all the food items and it is said that to the diabetic people less than 55 glycemic index food should be consumed medium should be uh, moderately taken and high glycemic index food should be avoided like and this too totally depends on what is the amount of your blood glucose level right like if it is normal or if it is to the lower side, we can go for consumption of high glycemic index. If it is to the normal side, then medium can also be consumed. And if it is high, then obviously we have to focus on the low glycemic index food. So you can see that, suppose if I talk about, uh, yeah, see, muesli, oatmeal, all this comes into the medium glycemic index food. If you talk about peanuts, beans, lentils, all they come into the low glycemic index food. Even all your vegetables, 90% of your vegetables, more than 90%, they are low glycemic index food. Next comes the osteoporosis. So although osteoporosis, uh, you know, it, it's, it is obviously a specific disease, and uh, the symptoms are going to be seen uh, during the old age only, but we consider it into the non-communicable disease because it is also very fatal. And the deposition starts from the adolescent period only, from the childhood period only. Because the uh, child or the adolescent who does not consume good amount of calcium in their diet, the bone mineral density reduces. And at the time when the requirement of calcium is very high, especially in case of females during pregnancy, when the uh, pregnancy and lactation, the calcium requirements doubles. So at that period of time, when your body is lacking the calcium for the baby's growth, for the fetal growth, the calcium is needed. So body will start taking it from your like from the mother's body so that is termed as leaching of calcium calcium leaches out from the mother's body to fulfill the requirement for of the uh, growing fetus in the womb of the pregnant mother and if she's a lactating mother so for the high amount of calcium in the breast milk so that is why the leaching of the calcium 
during this period may leads to osteoporosis osteo means bones porous is the pores which is going to be there so that calcium leaches out from the bones so the osteoporosis symptoms are going to be seen after the menopause reason being because uh the estrogen is actually responsible for the metabolism of calcium and after the menopause the estrogen levels are going to be down so calcium doesn't metabolize in the body and in this way it leads to osteoporosis so how we can prevent and manage it obviously high calcium rich food exercising regularly and preventing smoking habit also calcium rich foods are see it's a myth like you know uh, our mother used to tell us that have a glass of milk it will improve your bone density and all yes milk and milk products do contains calcium but along with that it is very important to understand the role of vitamin d also because vitamin d helps in the in, in metabolizing the calcium so that's why vitamin d should be taken so that the whatever amount of calcium is been consumed is going to be metabolized in the body along with that broccoli even your you know ragi that which is the uh, veget good excellent vegetarian source of the calcium that that can also be consumed right so all these sources should be consumed so that the rda will be fulfilled now the disease which comes at the end is obesity like i said obesity is a multifactorial approach uh, like you know uh, uh, disease because it is attached with many types of non communicable disease diabetes will also leads to obesity obesity will also leads to diabetes hypertension can be due to obesity obesity can lead to hypertension and all so the causes of obesity can be many psychological factors genetic factors hormonal imbalance sedentary lifestyle more consumption of calorie rich food and obviously um when i say psychological factors what what how psychological factors can lead to obesity so see stress is one of the factor which may you know play with your weight because many people have the habit to eat a lot when they are in stress it happens with us also when you used to have exam next day so at the night you are like previous night you are going to suffer from the stress of the exam so you start eating chips you start eating junk you eat a lot when you are in stress similarly other people are also there those who start eating less during the stress because it's the individual response fight flight or fight so all these factors hormonal imbalance also like in females pcod pcos which are very common polycystic cystic ovarian syndrome or syndrome so this imbalance also leads to weight gain and high fat rich food item is one of the cause right so uh, what are the consequences we have already decided so obviously losing the body fat is one of the treatment but how we can lose the fat how much amount of the fat should be reduced you know on a weekly per, on a weekly basis or on a monthly basis that plays a major role see because people those who are overweight those who are obese they want a quick result i started going to gym today within a month my weight should be reduced to 5 to 7 kgs so every body has different response and weight loss is always a gradual process right like you should obviously you should make goals but the goals should be practical and you have to be very calm or you have to be very patient when you are on weight loss program so it should always be gradual because if it you start choosing the kind of um, methods which give you the quick weight loss so that will be only applicable when you are doing it it is not going to be on long run on long term so that is why weight loss should always be gradual and before that you should always keep a check on your weight right like suppose today when you started going to gym or you started doing the physical activity you were 90 kgs so you should always keep a check on the weight on a alternative day or maybe a week after a week that how much you have reduced so that you will be able to mark the process that this much percentage of the weight loss is there on the weekly pros, per, uh, weekly basis on a monthly basis and then how you have to change your exercises your dietary pattern your protein intake so that you will be able to go for a gradual weight loss which will last for longer period of time right doctor ma'am uh, yes. sorry for stopping you in the middle but ma'am can you conclude your session soon because we have another session from 8 to 9 yeah yeah sure uh, i'll just take 5 minutes more and i'll conclude it okay thank you ma'am
Yeah. Right. So these are uh, the pro uh, the methods of losing the weight. Like you have to slow down um, uh, the process of you know eating the meals. Eating the meal doesn't mean that you have to eat less or you know, but uh, the proportion, the portion, and again, uh, the uh, method of consuming the food you should not always be in hurry you should you should not gulp the food you should not eat more amount of food in less period of time you should chew the food properly right so all these factors also play a major role then always serve food on a small plates right because in small plate the food look large and you know psychologically it is going to give you the feeling of satisfaction then three meals major meals and two midday meal two midday snacks should be there more fruits and vegetables should be there and then stress stress is not a disease stress is not at all any ncd but it is a factor which may lead to ncd right because whenever a person is in stress it changes the normal functioning of the body right it is a normal psychological or physical reaction to the demands of the li life and we also call it as fight or flight response so whenever your body is in stress be it physical stress like suppose there was an accident there was a trauma to your body physical injury to your body or the psychological stress that is going to cause a fight or flight mechanism that means how your body struggles to cope up with the stress so there are lots of hormones like aldosterone which gets increased which leads to stress anxiety depression so stress management is very important because all these factors are interlinked to ncds right like when the stress occurs the blood pressure is going to be increased the heartbeat is going to be increased the person is going to be anxious that this will lead to upset in the gastrointestinal system will lead to diarrhea constipation and so on so stress management needs to be done that could be done by doing meditation by doing meditation yoga anything which the person likes right so body relaxation exercise breathing exercise physical activity yoga meditation counseling right healthy eating practices also because there are certain foods which also reduces the stress right so like fruits vegetables chocolates cocoa all these reduces the stress so they can be consumed so healthy diet is very important right and we should always be uh, with our roots so traditional indian diet which used to be very high in fiber and fruits and vegetables were also high they, that should be consumed we should avoid junks physically act, uh, active uh, uh, activity should be there at least 30 to 45 minutes of physical activity should be there then quit smoking and alcohol because obviously uh, you know it increases the chances of all the ncds which we already have discussed and that's all so that was all about the today's session